Yo guys, welcome back to another episode of With The Look. Today's outfit is inspired by the one and only Kalani from her recent tour, I believe. The jacket slash top that she was wearing is from Open Ceremony, costing a whopping £384. I really fell in love with it and thought it was really cool, so I decided to try and make it myself. I am unaware of where her bottoms are from, but all in all, I tried my best to make the whole outfit, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so starting off with the pants or trousers, whichever you guys call it, as you guys can see, they are humongous. I bought these for a pound in a charity shop that was doing a one pound sale and they were in the men's section. This was the closest thing I could find to cargo pants. So in order to make them fit me, I'm just taking my roll of elastic here, as you guys can see, and we are going to make a strip of elastic in order to put in the waistband in order to make the waistband smaller so I'm just going to open up my trousers and then just measure how much elastic I want along the waistband I'm going to put majority of, of this elastic um, along the back of the waistband um, you can do it all the way around if you would like to but I like just the seamless look from the front so I'm going to put majority of it at the back which will create a lot of gathering so if you don't really like that I suggest putting it all the way around but because I just wanted it at the back I just did it at the back so I'm just taking my seam ripper as you guys can see here and I'm going to make two tiny little slits on either end of the back of the trousers as you guys can see um, later on you guys will see that I decided to make the slits further apart so I'm just doing it just behind the belt loop so you can't see it so I'm just taking my seam ripper like so and then just doing it once on one side and then repeating the same thing on the other side and be sure that you don't um, cut straight through the waistband you just want to go through the first layer of the inside because you want that seam to be hidden then once I've done that I just took my elastic and a safety pin like so and then I'm just taking my elastic and then measuring along my waistband and then cutting away about a quarter of that length to obviously shorten it because you want to cinch in that waist so once I cut to my desired length I just measured it up again and attached my safety pin and then just started feeding my elastic through my waistband as you guys can see here and be sure to anchor down the other end of your elastic with a pin so it doesn't disappear inside the waistband and then once I was finished doing that, I just pinned either end and gave it a quick try on just to see how I like the fit. And it was still a little too baggy, so I just made the slits further apart so I could add a small elastic. And then I just repeated the same thing again, and I was happy with that length, so I just left it. So in order to secure my elastic in place and to close off my slits, I'm just changing my settings to number 9, which is a zigzag stitch, and then I'm just sewing straight across the slit like so. And just be sure not to catch the belt loop underneath when you are doing this, and try and, make, try and find a thread colour that is as close to your trousers as possible, because you kind of want it to look as clean as you can. So once I was done doing that, I just turned my trousers inside out, as I'm going to do the bottom half of my trousers in order to make the cuffed ankle so I'm just turning up the bottom of the trousers and then I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did on the waistband by creating a tunnel and inserting my elastic into the tunnel so I'm just going to do that on both legs and then just pin all the way around um, making sure to leave uh, just a few inches in order to insert my elastic and yeah then taking two strips of elastic that I measured around my ankle, I'm going to pin around my circle like so and then just insert my elastic into both legs. Okay, once I was done with that, moving on to the top slash jacket part of the outfit. So I thrifted this jacket, I think, the same time I thrifted those trousers. Um, I think this was £4. It's just a dark wash denim jacket. So I started off by laying my denim jacket down on the floor and then I'm just going to cut along the front line chest of 
the jacket and then just do the same thing along the back seam and just follow the line all the way around like so. So once I was done cutting it out, I had something that looked like this. So all I'm doing now is folding under the bottom half of the jacket as I do want to crop it and shorten it. And in order to add some more buttons, I'm just going to take the hem that's at the bottom of the jacket, like so. And then I'm just going to take a pin and just mark where I've cropped it so I know where I want to cut. And yeah. I also had to take off a couple of inches at the back in order for it to fit so it didn't actually fall off me so I'm just taking it in about a good I think that's about five inches I think um, from the back seam line and then cut off the excess fabric. And then of course I had to refer my pins on the inside so that's just what I've done here and then in order to keep my line as similar as I could I just made a little notch at the top of um, the jacket so I knew where to pin and then once I was done sewing that I'm just going to crop my jacket now with the pin that I um, put into the jacket earlier on when I was trying it on and then I'm just taking my ruler and doing a straight line straight across. Then once I was done doing my line, I just got my scissors and cut straight across. Then taking the bottom half of the jacket that I cut away, I'm going to mark up about two inches above the original seam line of the jacket. And I'm going to cut away the button and a buttonhole that was um, attached to the jacket earlier as I'm going to reattach this in order to make three buttons on my jacket. Once I was done doing it on both ends, I just took my scissors and cut along the line that I just made. Once I was done doing that I just grabbed my jacket again and I'm just going to reattach the bottom hem of the jacket by pinning all the way along. I was going to sandwich these two together um, but I kind of like the distressed hem against the bottom half so I just left it but if you'd like to actually sandwich them together so it's like a clean line you can do so it's completely up to you. Then once I've finished pinning both sides, I'm just going to sew along the bottom hem like so and then just repeat the same thing on the other side and then for the middle half of the jacket, as you guys can see, they're not attached so I'm just going to have to hem the inside before I attach those two halves together. So once I was done attaching the bottom, I just went ahead and hemmed the inside so I'm just taking the two flaps that I attached together and then just folding it in on itself in order to um, cover the frayed edges and then as you guys can see I'm kind of like just folding it and then I'm just doing a top stitch on top of either end of like this long rectangle um, and yeah that's just what I did on both sides in order to close off the hem and I also used a gold thread 
as I just wanted the thread to match the thread on the jacket so I just tried to find anything that was the closest colour to it. Then once I was done with that I went ahead and started the buckle half of my jacket. So I bought these two belts from Primark. I tried my hardest to thrift some belts but it is very hard to come across two of the same belts in a thrift store or a charity shop. So I just ended up buying these two from Primark. I believe they were like £2 each. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the top half of the buckle as this bit is going to be attached above the pocket. Depending on what type of belt you bought, you're going to need some pretty strong scissors in order to cut through this as um, the fabric that these belts are made out of are pretty strong and you guys will see what I mean later on as I don't actually end up using these buckles. So yeah, I just started by um, attaching them to the top half of the button and then just used the buttons on the pocket as like a guideline and then just centered it in the middle. So I went off to my sewing machine attempting to attach these buckles to the jacket and it was the hardest thing I tried to do. I didn't actually use the foot of the machine, I just tried to um, use the toggle at the side of the machine in order to um, get through the um, material the buckle was made out of but I don't have an industrial machine and I knew it was going to break my needle and then I tried to hand sew it and as you guys can see it was just too thick, it wasn't going through, I tried a thimble, I tried everything. So I came up with a second idea and then just decided to cut away the material the buckle is made out of by just undoing the stitching. As you guys can see I'm trying to rip this thing apart and then just use the metal of the buckle instead of actually using the material it's attached to. So I'm just going to get um, some scissors and cut away the thread that is attached to it. Then once I had taken it apart I just grabbed some excess fabric that was left over from the jacket that I cut away earlier and then I'm just taking the buckle and tracing around the existing one as you guys can see and then I just made two of these in order to have one on the left and one on the right and then I just reattached the buckle onto the denim. Once I was done with that I had something that looked like this. So all I had left to do now was attach the little belt loops for the back of the jacket. So I'm just using the excess fabric that I cut away from the back earlier and then I'm just cutting it straight down the middle and then I'm going to just take my ruler and measure six rectangles. They can be as big or small as you would like but it's just as long as they fit across the width of your belt strap it's completely fine. I think I should have made mine a little um, more narrower. They are quite wide but all in all it came out fine. Um, so yeah I'm just taking my ruler measuring out how wide I want my rectangles to be and then I'm just going to cut this rectangle out. Then in order to get them all as close to the same size as possible I'm just folding them over like so. So they just mirror each other all the way along the top and then I'm just cutting like little notches as I go along the top and then I just keep doing this until I have six in total. Then once I was finished with my rectangles I just went to my sewing machine and hemmed all of them all the way around and then I had something that looked like this and I'm just going to put three on one side and then three on the other 
trying to line them up as close as possible and then I'm just taking some pins and pinning in place um, I kind of preferred to pin them while the belt strap was um, inside the rectangle just so I know how close to um, sew and it just helped make sure that the um, belt strap was snug inside each rectangle so it didn't move oh and also I didn't film it but after I attached the rectangles I also secured the belt buckle to the back of the jacket by sewing along the top of it I know I said before guys that it didn't work but this was slightly a bit more easier to go through than the buckle so again I didn't use my foot of the machine I just used the toggle at the side and then just gently hand wove it through through the belt strap and it just attached it in place the original one has rivets at the back of it but obviously they are machine made so yeah once I was done doing all that, I was finally finished. So this is the finished look guys, I really hope you enjoyed, if you did please do give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next one, peace.